Hi everyone. This video is kind of going to be all over the place because I did start filming a video update on my birthday and I plan to show you my week of healing in Cape Town. So I wanted to start with showing you my birthday and then what I do in Cape Town to heal because I've been doing a lot of things. I've been doing reflexology, I have been doing ozone therapy and Russ also arrived on his birthday and I set up a whole surprise party but the coronavirus has kind of messed things up for us and kind of thrown everything into a whole chaotic crazy spin so i'm going to make do with the footage that i do have and then i'll pick it up from there this one is going to be interesting i try to steer away from drama that is not what this channel is about it's about health and it's about healing but i do kind of have to fill you in on what has been going on because there's just a lot that's been going on and things have changed so i will fill you all in after showing you what i did film for my birthday and then i'll update you on everything else hi guys i know it's been such a long time and we have so much to catch up on but i thought that today was a really good day to start because it's my 30th birthday today i'm saying goodbye to my 20s and moving on to my hopefully better 30s and I'm in Cape Town at the moment and I'm doing a lot of healing things in time for my wedding. Today the plan is I've just ordered a low carb cake and I'm going to a low carb high tea with my mom and my sister and my niece. So I'm so excited for that. The cake looks absolutely amazing. I'll show you guys later. In terms of my healing on disulfiram, there isn't really much to update. I feel like I've hit like a bit of a plateau, which isn't such a bad thing because I'm not really at a very low level. I'm at a pretty good level, but traveling really did affect me. Oh my gosh, traveling on the plane just made my heart go crazy. I couldn't breathe properly again. It was just awful. I did stop my disulfiram just before traveling and then I decided to just go on it straight away again because it controls my heart rate usually and it does also clear out mucus. So it did really help when I went back on that. But another two things that really helped me get back on my feet when I landed in Cape Town was reflexology. I have an amazing reflexologist and she made a world of difference as soon as she pushed my feet it's like she pushed me to a new body it was absolutely amazing so i see her every week and then i do ozone therapy every week i do iv ozone they just put the gas straight into you i've forgotten what it's called but it has a special name that type of ozone apparently it's the most effective is what i hear and i must say it has been really helpful for me but I have had to go off the disulfiram again because it's my wedding on the 4th of April and it stays in your system for a long time. And I need to be doing hair dyeing and nail polish and makeup for my wedding. So I need to be off it, which I'm really disappointed about because I actually feel a lot better when I am on the disulfiram. So I'll let you know how it goes with that. And I'm also going to take you through kind of a week in my healing down here in Cape Town because it really does help me doing these little things. I do lymphatic drainage massages and I do reflexology as I said and the ozone therapy and those are the main things that help me. But I also see my doctor who's in Cape Town and I'm also embarking on a new treatment, which I will be taking you through and discussing with you. I think I'll be able to carry on my disulfiram while I'm on this treatment, but it's basically more of like a quantum medicine approach, which I'm really excited to share with you and to experience. So I have kind of started one session so far. So that will take a lot of explaining what that whole process is and I will be sharing it with you guys. So I'm so excited to share that with you guys. It's such an exciting new perspective to healing and I'm really hopeful about it. In the meantime, I'm going to carry on doing what I'm doing because it is helping me. 
I am getting impatient, of course, because I want to be healing by the end of this year. I really want to be healed. I really want to have a child and have a family. So I'm looking really forward to that. And let's get on with the birthday. So something that I should mention is that Ross is not with me today. He's still in Abu Dhabi and he's actually coming here on his birthday, which is next week. So we're going to do something a little bit special for him when he comes. But he did send me a gift which arrived yesterday and I'm so excited about this gift. Let me show you. So, sorry, I'm growing my nails for the wedding. It's an Organite pendant. And on my Instagram, I did a post about all of its properties because it's very lengthy. But basically, it's this company in Africa and they make natural things out of natural earthly components and it absorbs radiation and they also do ones that help with 5g and things like that so i definitely recommend you guys go and check it out this is not sponsored they don't even know who i am it was my reflexologist who actually mentioned it to me and told me to try it out because i was telling her how in back in the uae they're putting up a thousand 5g towers and i'm so scared about that so she told me that this will help with that and they help with a whole lot of other things as well. So go check it out on my Instagram. I'll also link the website below so you can go have a look at everything that they have there. They have a huge variety. And please excuse my eyebrows. I'm also growing them out for my wedding because I'm going to be doing threading. Most of the products that I'm going to be using for my wedding are going to be organic and as chemical free as possible. So I have ordered products that are like organic and chemical free so I am going to be sharing that with you guys as well and also I think I'm just going to share them after I've used them so that you know how they looked and how they worked for me so I'm really excited to share that with you because I've sourced all kinds of products from all over the world and it took a lot of research and I'm really excited about the quality of a lot of these products I have tested out like the nail polish for example and I think it's really great that we have these options in this day and age and they're no less amazing than any other products that have chemicals and things in them so yeah as i say i'm really excited i will put blog posts about that um but i think that i'm only gonna do it after i've tried them my cake just arrived and i'm so happy it's a keto cake it's banting and low carb and I think healthy. I'm not sure how healthy it is, but they use healthy ingredients as healthy as possible. And how beautiful. I'll show you more of it later when I tuck in, but that will probably be after the high tea because I need to leave space. I'm all ready to go. I'm just waiting for my mom and sister. I'll see you there. I'm excited. <laughs> See, we're out of time I guess no one's to blame Nobody crossed the line I guess we couldn't see Somehow we couldn't feel Maybe we rose too fast Maybe we got too high As you can see, I had a really great birthday I had amazing low-carb treats and I enjoyed myself so much and spending time with my family and especially with my niece was absolutely amazing and it was a blessed birthday. I wasn't on disulfiram at the time and I was actually feeling really awful on my birthday from being off disulfiram. So I did actually make the decision to go back on disulfiram even though I had my wedding coming up and I knew that I was going to be using alcohol products like hair dye and nail polish and makeup and all of those things. I still made the decision to go back on disulfiram because that's how bad I was feeling off of it compared to when I'm on it. So that's really saying something. I feel a lot, lot, lot better when I'm on disulfiram. And then what happened next is a little bit dramatic, but it's real and it is what happened. 
When Ross was arriving in Cape Town, I set up a whole surprise party for him. I wanted him to feel really special. We hadn't seen each other in a whole month. So I went out of my way to set up a surprise party for him. I was back on Dysulfurum. I was feeling a little bit better. I blew up balloons. I set them up. I got some decorations. I made it really, really special. And he was arriving on the Monday and on that Sunday before, our president had announced that the coronavirus was officially an emergency situation in South Africa and he announced some restrictions like you weren't supposed to have gatherings of over a hundred people. Luckily our wedding was less than 100 people so we were still good to go and the risks were really really low on whether somebody could actually catch the COVID-19 at our gathering. We were taking extra precautions, we were making sure that none of our guests from overseas were coming anymore so that nobody was at risk at the wedding and we were making sure that the gathering was really small and everything was sanitized and we were taking extra extra precautions. Russ was also taking extra precautions when he was traveling to Cape Town. He brought a sanitizer with him and sanitized everything down on the plane around him. He had no people sitting around him. There were about 20 seats free around him, so it was like a very, very empty plane. He also wore masks. And I know there's a lot of debate whether masks are actually useful or not, but what he did is he had a whole lot of masks and he changed them every half an hour. And he also bought a whole box of gloves that he changed after touching things and he would throw the dirty masks and gloves away. And he also made a trip to the bathroom every 30 minutes to wash his hands. And then he just slept and there were no people around him so it was very very low risk of him getting contaminated and when he arrived in Cape Town they checked him three times and they also made him fill out a form. So I felt very reassured that he had taken all the precautions and that we were at a very low risk. At this point I was staying in a rental and it was like a cottage attached to a house and the people who lived in the house were around the same age as us. So they were a couple with a baby. And when I looked at the place, I informed them that I was having a small gathering for Ross's birthday. It was literally just family and I let them know that. And also on the day that I was setting up Ross's birthday, the lady from next door came and fixed some things in the house because I had been asking her for a while to fix some things, like the door didn't open to the outside and the shower wasn't working. So she came in with some workers and she was fixing things in the house while I was setting up the surprise party, which she knew started at 5.30. So Ross arrives at 5.30, his parents pick him up from the airport and at 5.30 when he arrives, we have some guests there. She sends me a message to say that he cannot come in and he cannot stay there. Now to make it very clear, I had nowhere else to stay. I am very, very sensitive to mold and I'm very, very sensitive to chemicals and animals. So I had nowhere else to stay in Cape Town. This was the only place that I was able to stay and they knew this because I explained my sensitivities before I moved in to make sure that the place was safe for me to rent. And then bearing in mind, I hadn't seen Ross, who I'm about to marry in a whole month and we were excited, we were planning our wedding, but COVID-19 was 
growing in our country and it was definitely stressing us out like there were a lot of suppliers asking us if we we're going to cancel the wedding and we were feeling really stressed at this point so i replied to her message and i just said can we please have a civil conversation about this at a later stage i have guests here and i'll chat to you afterwards about it so i walked out to let ross into the house and she had called her father-in-law and her father and two other men to stand on the driveway and make sure that Russ was not allowed in. So long story short, she closed the gates on me when I went outside to Russ and she let her dogs out, her big dogs, because she knew that I was scared of them and did not want to let us in. What proceeded from that was, I can only describe it as a scene from one of those trashy reality TV shows. In hindsight, it's a little bit funny, but at the time it really wasn't. I was exhausted, stressed, sick, angry, and just kind of fed up. But her father-in-law did eventually allow Ross to come inside and see his set up for his birthday and have some of his ice cream cake. That's all he wanted. He wanted an ice cream cake and I made a really special ice cream cake for him. So he allowed him to do that and then we packed everything up and we had to leave and we had nowhere to go. We had to stay in his granny's house. Luckily, she was kind enough to let us stay there. Thank you, Gaga, for saving the day. And within the next few days, everything started to fall apart. We had to postpone our wedding, so our wedding is now postponed. We traveled around from apartment to apartment trying to find somewhere to stay. And eventually, by the grace of God, my mom's friend let out her apartment to us. So we're busy renting that at the moment. The borders closed in the UAE, so we can't get back to the UAE where we live. The borders are still shut. They've just extended it for another two weeks. So we are staying in an apartment indefinitely and we're trying to make the most of it. But the good news is that I have more time to heal before my wedding, to enjoy my wedding day. And secondly, I have time to focus on my new healing treatment, which I'll tell you guys about now. And I have Russ here to assist me and to join me. So I am actually really blessed and grateful for how it all turned out. And we are going to be making the most of it. So now onto my new treatment. I'm not jumping from treatment to treatment. I do still take disulfiram and I do still find it really, really useful. I feel much better when I'm on disulfiram. And my healer that I'm working with now, he agrees that I should be on disulfiram, but he does say that I should be taking it in an enteric capsule. I know I say that word wrong enteric capsule i think is the way to say it but that's just the way i say it so um so yeah i take it in an enteric capsule and the next thing that is very important to tell you guys about is my diet which has changed so all along i've been doing the ketogenic diet and i do find the ketogenic diet extremely helpful it does starve pathogens it's really great However, because I was doing the ketogenic diet and eating such a restrictive diet and because I had no proper guidance on my diet as to what my specific body is sensitive to, I kind of wrote it off as I'm doing the right thing in terms of diet and I kind of just ignored the diet part and thought I have that all under control. But my new healer has tested every single food that I eat to see whether it's okay for me personally to eat that food item because he discovered that my body is extremely sensitive, not just to foods, but to chemicals and to everything. My body is sensitive to absolutely everything, which is something that I didn't know, but I just didn't know how extensive it was. So even some of my organic products, which are healthy, products for a regular person to use, some of them I'm still sensitive to. Things like essential oils that have a strong smell, I'm, a, I'm sensitive to that and I won't always be sensitive to that, it's just while I'm healing. So basically this healer tries to make sure that your body is in a healing state. 
I'm not going to explain exactly how his methods work because luckily he has his own YouTube channel, which I'll link down below. And he's so much better at explaining it than I am. He's the professional. He knows exactly what he's doing. So I strongly encourage you guys to go and have a look at the link below and see what he's all about because he's really an incredible healer. I'll tell you more about it. He also has a Facebook group where he runs free healing sessions. So you can join that group and you can join his live videos where he does free group healing sessions. That's how I came to know him. I joined his Facebook group and I joined in his group healing sessions. And now I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with him and it's over the phone. I don't see him in person. So basically anyone can do it from around the world. It's over the phone. The one thing is that the sessions are really expensive. So that's something that we were a little bit concerned about. But he said to Russ that he guarantees that I will feel a difference within the first three sessions. And I can tell you guys that the difference that I felt even after the first session was not just a small difference. I felt a huge difference like the very next day after the session after my second session i actually felt very floaty i felt like my body was floating and almost like numb and i was like what has he done to my body but he practices quantum medicine this is the only way that i can explain it i encourage you to go and look on his youtube channel it is absolutely amazing he deals with traumas from your past and he works with getting your body into a healing state, meaning that your tissues are in a fear state. And that is what causes pathogens to take over or causes a problem with pathogens in your body. And his methods try to get your body into a healing state. And you can feel it when your body is in a healing state. You can actually feel it. It's, it's so incredible and it's so amazing. And I'm so excited about it. So everyone takes a different amount of time for this to work. And his estimate was that it'll take me just over five months to heal. And I really feel that everything has happened for a reason because now I'm excited to heal and then have my wedding and start my life. So I've had to change a lot of my products. I've had to change my diet. The only thing that I can eat, and I'm not recommending this for everyone because it's all according to my body, but I'm just telling you out of interest. The only thing I can eat is meat, but it should ideally be organic meats with less hormones and antibiotics and things like that. But I can eat meat. I can eat sweet potato. I can eat watermelon, broccoli, cauliflower, blueberries, almonds and that's all and i drink water and rooibos tea and i can have stevia but it has to be completely pure stevia it can't have anything added to it and that is all i can have to eat and then my products that i use i use himalaya baby wash i don't know if you guys know the brand himalaya i think it's an indian brand i use the baby soap it's made out of chickpeas and something else i'll link it below but as i say that's just what works for me but it is a very natural very mild wash and then i use some of the same south african products for cleaning products i'll link all the products below but most of them are actually products that you can only get in south africa so if you're from south africa you can benefit from that i don't think the rest of the world can get hold of these products especially during this time but um maybe have a look at the link down below anyway and see the ingredients and see maybe if you can find something similar so it's been a really, really rough couple of weeks, but we are making the most of it and we're having like a little honeymoon relaxing in our apartment. And I am so excited I have another session tonight. I've been feeling actually much more relaxed and the terrible feelings of illness and nausea and anxiety that usually overcome me have been really mellowing out and I feel... I feel kind of like a different person. I have to say that. I don't like to say that because I don't like to speak too soon. I always feel like I'm jinxing it, but I do feel like a different person. I do feel more energetic. I do feel more clear-headed. 
I just feel a lot better in general, I have to say that. My first session, basically, he identified all of the pathogens that were my main offenders and exactly what symptoms they were responsible for as well. So for example, he would say, so in terms of the fatigue, if I took away the Lyme, how much fatigue would still be present? And then it would be like a four out of 10. And you would be like, okay, what other pathogens are contributing to this? Okay, rickettsia or whatever else there was, which I was very surprised to find that I had quite a high candida load, which I think is also very common with people who have Lyme disease. So maybe a lot of you guys have that too, and you maybe don't know it. And I did actually have mold. So I'm very sensitive to mold, I know I am. And he did find that I have mold causing actual symptoms. So that was really interesting too. And then in the next sessions, he kind of did like a detox flushing all of the gunk and the sludge out of my body and I also have to do my part you know every single day I have to do some like homework if you will but I can't really talk about it here because I can't explain to you what I'm doing without you understanding what the point of it is if that makes sense so I do encourage you to go and have a look at his YouTube channel it will be very helpful I promise let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. I prefer it if you guys comment underneath the video so that everyone can see, everyone who's watching the video. Otherwise, I get repeat questions all the time and it's much easier to just answer it that way. Please do also give it a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe to our channel to get updated about future videos because a lot of people ask me for updates when I already do have updates posted and they just haven't been notified about it. So make sure that you've got the little bell button turned on so that you do get notified about updates. Thank you for watching. Bye. Chasing the